Hey, what is up everybody? Platform Disciple here. And as you may or may not know, uh, I haven't made a video in a while and I had a video due uh, that I should have done two to three days ago, which is this video that you're watching right now, which is uh, the finalists for my card creation contest. Before we get into that, I will say that uh, I did also make a video talking about the legendary changes, uh, and that is on the Lightmare official channel now. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, go ahead. It'll cover the changes. It doesn't cover my opinion on the individual cards, uh, but I haven't actually tested those changes yet, so I don't have a strong opinion. Um, it just covers what the changes were. So if you, if you aren't familiar with the changes yet, go check it out. Um, and I will also remind you that uh, this video, the finalists will all receive one booster pack for being finalists. So if you see your card in this video, congratulations, you've already won some small prize. And uh, then there will be a vote, uh, which should pop up in the upper right hand corner after all of the cards are shown. Uh, and you'll be able to pick and the winner of that will get an alternate art Martyr Golem, which is a pretty awesome prize. At least I think so, and I hope whoever wins enjoys it. Um, so the rules for the contest were that you had to create a Flamed On card that was at least seven resources and at least two purity, but still had to be playable and not overpowered. And the reason we did this is because the existing seven cost and greater Flamed On cards are honestly pretty freaking terrible um and the reason for that is just because flame dawn has been pushed into this super aggressive strategy and it's very difficult to make um aggressive cards that are still reasonable at a high cost so let's check out what all of you have come up with starting with one final march and before we get into this i will say that one final march and uh pretty much all these submissions fit a very similar theme and i think that's pretty reasonable which is that all of them are cards that assist flamed on in getting over the 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 bump that happens late game for them because uh what generally happens for flamed on is if the opponent stabilizes uh around turn five or six if they're still alive and they've managed to to develop a board or a way to defend themselves it becomes almost impossible for flamed on to win and uh what that has done to the meta uh at least in my opinion is that it has resulted in the shift from triple flamed on as the most aggressive deck to death blast which is one flamed on and two veror because that deck uh, with all the Veror direct damage, um, can basically be as aggressive as a triple Flame Dawn deck, or at least nearly as aggressive, but has the tool to get past that turn 5, turn 6, like, dead spot for Flame Dawn. Uh, and obviously, the, the, the solution isn't just to print Death Blast for Flame Dawn, that would be a nightmare. The solution is to have cards that let Flame Dawn have some kind of late game, but not one that's abusive. Uh, something like One Final March, which is a unique ability, costs eight, and is three purity, and has an extreme cost. Sacrifice all deployed characters you control. Uh, and for doing this, you do damage equal to half the sacrifice character's total attack to your opponent's fortress. And the idea here is that if you successfully get your opponent pretty low, you can just blast them with all your guys for a lot of damage. Uh, and of course, the balancing factor is that if you fail to kill them with this, you have put yourself in a really, really bad position because you have killed all your characters. And I like that uh, there is counterplay for your opponent. Um, and also, it's worth keeping in mind that this card is very situational, uh, which is also good because this card only is useful when uh, when doing half the damage of your character's attack uh, directly is going to be more useful than just straight up attacking because ability cards happen before you attack. 
Uh, and this is another kind of balancing factor because if if this card just just dealt the damage and didn't sacrifice them or sacrifice them at the end of the turn after they attacked, uh, any Flamed On deck could just take advantage of this card at turn eight without really thinking about it. The point here is that this card specifically helps Flamed On in the situation that they cannot get past the defense. Uh, it just, just helps them get over the defense, and I like that. So let's move on to our next submission which is to the last drop. Another ability, it is nine cost and three purity, and this is essentially a reworked bloodbath. Because uh, for those of you who know bloodbath, um, it's it's just, it just doesn't do what it needs to do, especially at that cost. And uh, bloodbath, for those of you who don't know, is an eight cost flamed on ability that takes all of your characters, moves them to the assault zone, takes all your opponent's characters and moves them to the defense zone, uh, at least I believe it does that. And then all of your characters attack an additional time this turn. Uh, very cool effect, but one that in practice doesn't do anything because uh, in almost every scenario, your flamed on characters have such a, a, a low health that having two addition or having one additional attack doesn't matter because after they make one attack, they're just going to die after attacking into your opponent's defender. Um, whereas to the last drop uh, also gives your characters an additional attack, but it also gives them the ability to survive at one health the first time they die in that turn. Uh, so that basically patches up the the weakness of Bloodbath, which was that it the weakness of Bloodbath was that it wasn't doing anything. Your characters were not attacking an additional time, whereas to the last drop is going to let them attack an additional time. Uh, the last thing I will say is that To the Last Drop also serves as a way to protect your characters from board wipes like um, uh, Overcharge Storm or Mass Death because your characters will survive at one health. Uh, which is, people, y you might you might be scared about that, but keep in mind this is a 9 cost card and also Flamed On has many tools already that help them uh, avoid removal or board wipes. Um, and those ones are at lower cost as well uh, not to mention things like you know martyr golem uh, that any, any faction has access to so this seems like a very reasonable card and i like it a lot more than bloodbath as a matter of fact if they if they uh if the balance team ever gets to rebalancing the epics i would not be shocked to see uh bloodbath be reworked into a card very similar to this one to the last drop Okay, let's move on to our next one, which is a 7 cost artifact, 3 purity, and that's Helios Sword of the Flame Dawn. Um, and just real quick, I will say that the original creator of this card had named it Soul Sword of the Flame Dawn, but we talked about it in the comments uh, and both agreed that because Soul was already the name of the Overseer's character, uh, it was substantially less confusing and also sounded just as cool to call it Helios Sword of the Flame Dawn. And this card, when you kill one of your opponent's characters, that opponent doesn't lose any morale, and instead they lose health equal to that character's morale cost. And this is a really, really cool, interesting card uh, that forces your opponent to play very differently, um, because suddenly... Uh, morale which you never have to care about against flamed on because some becomes something that they actually have to really look at like playing a wealthy noble um when your opponent might have a flamed on commando to kill it will result in you taking 10 damage uh and what i like about this uh similar to to the the previous cards is that it does help you get over that that turn five turn six like issue where he, your opponent's stabilized uh, and you just can't get past their defense. This card lets you attack into their defense aggressively because you can still potentially do damage to them. Uh, the other thing I will say is that because this is a replacement effect, it replaces their morale uh, loss with damage. Um, this effect doesn't stack, which is of course good, uh, and it's it's it's. 
it just changes the game in a way that I like and gives the Flamed On the ability to to push past a defense in a way that isn't a, abusive. Like once again, what I'm what I'm gonna say again and again is that Flamed On does not need a death blast, but having a card like Helios sort of a Flamed On uh, fills the same role but in a substantially less abusive way. All right. Next, let's take a look at Tank Truck, which is a 2 purity, 8 cost, 1 morale cost, artificial character is a 10-1. This is also our first character submission, um, and it has charge. Uh, I <laughs> So I edited the images for some of these, and this one I, I forgot to put in charge the first time I made it, and it was just going to be a huge pain to remake the whole thing because I had uh, flattened it into a, uh, a PNG and it no longer had layers. The point is that charge is slightly out of place in the text box, and that's my fault, not the creator of the card's fault, is all I'm saying. So it does have charge. And when it deals damage to a fortress, it deals an additional 10 and then dies. So it can deal 20 damage if it's not defended. However, uh, it's also important to know that this is essentially Flamed On's equivalent of Boomy. So uh, most of the time, you're not sending it straight into your opponent's fortress. As a matter of fact, most of the time, uh, it says when it dies, it does 6 damage to all characters in the same zone and the zone opposing it. And all characters damaged this way become immolated, taking 2 damage at the end of each turn. So basically, the game plan is pull all your characters back and then just blast them with the tank truck, which is going to do 10 damage to the first thing it hits, then 6 damage to that thing and everything else, and then an additional 2 damage at the end of each turn. Uh, this is the ultimate card for just blasting through to defense, and that's pretty cool, and I think it's pretty flavorful as well. Um, and the, the other thing I will say is that uh, because it does do that additional 10 damage, if it does connect with the opponent's fortress, uh, you can make a super, super risky play, which is attacking with Tank Trunk and your other characters, knowing full well that if Tank Truck gets killed, it's going to blow up and kill everything on your side as well. Um, so it's, it's a cool card. I like it. Uh, and... It also serves that purpose of just getting through that tough defense. All right, we've got one more card, and that is Burning Berserker. Uh, and this is the one of the most interesting ones, I thought. Um, the, the one thing I will state is that it's got quite a bit of text on it. Um, all right, so let's, let's cover it. It's a 7 cost, 8 morale, 3 9, 2 purity, and it's a character. It has charge has Flame Strike 4, just a reminder that means uh, when it hits something it becomes immolated for 4, and has Multi Strike 2, so it's going to attack, um, I honestly don't know how Multi Strike works, I believe that's twice, um, but anyways, uh, while in the Assault Zone, it takes half combat damage, and the character's attacks move back to the Support Zone, and that's really the most important thing to keep in mind here, is that it attacks twice, and the first thing it attacks goes back to the support zone, and then it attacks the second thing, which also goes back to the support zone. So it stumbles two characters every combat, basically, including the first combat it comes out. Uh, and the last thing is that you can refund four, or excuse me, three resources when you're playing it by immolating itself, and it takes four damage at the end of each turn. Uh, so that's kind of like Speaks with Wind from Warpath, which means that this card can't come out uh, until you have seven resources, but once you do have seven resources, you have the option to play this for four resources, uh, which frees up space to play uh, a potentially another charge character. And I like this card a lot because um, I think it 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 really explores a, a unique design space that hasn't been explored yet, which is the it. Uh, it's not intended to just hit hard, which is what most Flamed On characters do. This one, it's intended to push characters out of the defense zone and then also immolate them so that they're they're severely weakened. Um, so it's really interesting. I like it a lot. I also think the resource refunding uh, basically makes it a lot more playable, and it's very hard to make playable seven cost or more Flamed On cards. So having that resource refunding is very good, I think. Um, 
The, the one thing I dislike about it is I don't think it needs to take half combat damage. Uh, but like I mentioned with Bloodbath, uh, problem with Bloodbath and Multi-Strike is that very frequently a character would attack and then it wouldn't get to attack the second time. So um, the, the other side of the coin is that Burning Berserker, if it didn't take half damage, it wouldn't necessarily actually be able to hit a second time. Um, so uh, take, take it as you will. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, of course, all the five I've shown are my personal favorites. Okay, and I'm going to show you one more, which is my personal submission, which you will not be able to vote for, um, but it's just my take on what you could do for a seven cost or more flamed on card, and uh, that is Paratrooper Assault, which is a three purity seven cost uh, flamed on card is an ability, and basically this is like a, a like a, a juiced up Call of the Crusade, uh, and it creates four flamed on aspirants in the assault zone, and until the end of the turn they have flying. So the idea is that you know they're coming down from whatever aircraft, and that turn they attack with flying, and then the subsequent turn they are regular aspirants, and um, this also fits the. The overall theme every every single one of these cards including my own focuses on cracking open the defense which is all of all, the, that's really the the essence of flamed on i guess okay so uh you should be able to see up in the right hand corner a pole and uh the winner of this poll is going to get that alternate art flamed on card. Uh, I might make up a I might make a follow up video, um, you know, just saying saying what the results are. And of course, I will contact uh, whoever has won and trade them the alternate art uh, martyr golem when I get the chance. And uh, for the people who um, the people who've submitted, you're getting one booster pack each, and uh, as what I have made uh, the norm at this point, uh, if you comment your in-game name in the comment section, I will be selecting one random person to also win a booster pack. Uh, I hope you found all these cards interesting, I hope you enjoyed the video and the discussion about them. Until next time everybody, peace out.